Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of the Democratic View on a very snowy day. Uh, my name is Phyllis Italiano. I'm the hostess. And with me today is a very distinguished gentleman who represents a group called Renewable Energy Long Island. And I think you all know him because he's rather, rather a uh, an eminent figure in our town of East Hampton. And his name is Gordian Rackham. Hi, Phyllis. Nice to have you again. And I am somebody who firmly believes in everything that you stand for, which is sustainability. Thank you. And well, thank you for uh, inviting me to your show again. Yes. Um, well, first of all, I would like to know something about your organization, Renewable Energy Long Island, and tell me exactly what that organization does and how you got interested and started with it. Well, sure. Uh, Renewable Energy Long Island is a not-for-profit organization. We're based here in uh, East Hampton. Uh, we actually cover the whole island, uh, and we advocate for renewable energy sources and uh, really for switching from fossil fuels which are unsustainable and quite expensive, as we find, to uh, clean renewable energy sources. Uh, uh, we help people figure out how to make their homes and their businesses more energy efficient and save money that way. And we help people to figure out uh, whether they can put solar panels on their homes or businesses, uh, help them find contractors. And we, of course, work with uh, town governments and other levels of government up to the state and sometimes national level uh, to enact policies, sensible energy policies that get us off our addiction to fossil fuels and uh, get us into the 21st century, uh, which really means switching to solar and wind and other forms of renewable and uh, uh, clean energy sources. And I understand that you are part of a group of people working with our town of East Hampton on making East Hampton completely free of that kind of dirty energy. And uh, that the goal is to, in by 2020, am I correct? Mm -hmm. And how did that group get to be formed? Well, this is the, uh, you're talking about the, uh, the town's uh, yes. Energy and Sustainability Committee. Yes, I am. Which is a, a great group of people headed up by our chairman, Frank Daleen. Uh, it's appointed by the town board. And um, a couple of years ago, we started looking at um, the, uh, the, the, the options we would have here community-wide within the town of East Hampton to make that switch from fossil fuels uh, to, to clean renewable energy sources. And um, we came up with a sort of an outline for that and uh, uh, proposed to the town board uh, and the town proposed this, uh, this idea to the town board and the town board adopted a resolution last year which sets a goal to meet 100% of East Hampton's energy needs, electricity needs first by 2020 and then, um, and then uh, 100, the equivalent of 100% of our overall energy needs wow. from renewable energy sources by 2030. And so that's a, it's a lofty goal. It's a tall order. Wow. But East Hampton is the first uh, town on Long Island and in New York State to, to show this kind of leadership and, uh, and basically say, look, we have to do something about climate change. We have to do something about these very volatile price spikes we experience with our electric rates and our energy prices, we have to switch to natural and locally available sources of energy. And that's what the town board did. The town board voted unanimously to adopt that resolution. And it's really not just for town facilities, but for the whole community. Every business, every home in East Hampton needs to um, help make this happen. 
That is an amazing, an amazing step forward into the future. And I must say, I'm very proud of our present town board. Uh, Larry Cantwell has certainly uh, led this group in the right direction. I believe Sylvia Ogilvy is your liaison? That's right. And uh, yes. I, know, I know Sylvia has her eye on the future all the time. That, that's just incredible. And uh, one of the things that you have been looking for is uh, you were involved in trying to have uh, wind power. Would you tell us the story about what happened with that? Yes, the, uh, the, the proposal that was uh, before LIPA uh, uh, on, uh, and decided uh, on, on December 17th um, was a, a large-scale offshore wind proposal. Uh, it would have been about 35 turbines to be located uh, 30 miles east of Montauk Point, way out in the Atlantic Ocean there. And it would be connected by cable uh, to, to the South Fork. And it would be powering uh, about uh, almost two thirds of our electricity needs on the East End for the entire East End really. Uh, unfortunately, that proposal was not selected by LIPA. On December 17th, the LIPA trustees turned that down and um, uh, selected other proposals, but none of these projects that they selected are going to be out here on the East End and on the South Fork, which is really unfortunate because we need clean power out here. LIPA and PSEG Long Island have said that uh, we need more power plants out here, and I think we shouldn't be building polluting power plants out here. Uh, we should be uh, meeting our energy needs with clean power sources like solar panels and offshore wind turbines and things like that. Why did they, why did they uh, refuse to allow it to go on? What was their reasoning? I, I, I still am trying to figure out how they came to that conclusion. They, they cited as a reason that wind power and solar power would be too expensive and that uh, there would be a risk that, the, that a federal tax credit that is available for wind power would not be available by the time the project gets built. But the developers of that uh, offshore wind proposal told us that they would carry that risk. So if that tax credit was not available anymore, they would eat that and there would be no charge, no, no additional charge to, to LIPA or to ratepayers. Uh, and uh, our calculations also showed that wind and solar power out here uh, costs, uh, costs about half, if not only one third of the cost of power from peaker plants, from, from power plants that would otherwise be operating out here. So renewable power out here can be cost competitive, if not cheaper, uh, and it certainly has a known and fixed price tag over decades, whereas with fossil fuel power, you're signing a blank check. You don't know what fossil fuels are going to cost between now and, let's say, 20 years from now. So apart from the environmental damage that burning oil and gas causes, financially, it doesn't make sense anymore. So you know, you, to, you really have to wonder. You really have to wonder what are these people thinking. Uh, I guess they really don't care about the earth. Uh, well, don't forget that PSEG Long Island is, a, is an investor-owned company, an investor-owned utility company. Out of New Jersey. Uh, based out of New Jersey. Uh, and their prime responsibility and their legal responsibility is to make sure that shareholders earn an adequate uh, rate of return on their capital or adequate dividends. So their primary responsibility is not the environment or, um, or public, a good public policy. Uh, they, have a, they have a monetary motive to, uh, to uh, increase return on investment and profits for their shareholder. And that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think um, it is important for us to make sure that we uh, establish policies, and that's exactly what the town of East Hampton did under the leadership of this town board, that make sure that we make the right decisions for our energy future and for our, for our children's future. 
And so that's what we're trying to do uh, here in East Hampton uh, with, with uh, the help of our Energy and Sustainability Committee at the town and the town board. And what is, uh, what is the status of our uh, solar panel type of installations that I know the town has been trying to get? I know they put out some RFPs. That's right. The, uh, the town had actually um, selected uh, a number of proposals that were made by developers to put large-scale solar uh, panel installations uh, at a number of locations, for example, at the uh, East Hampton Airport, uh, at the uh, Springs Fireplace uh, Recycling Center, and other locations. Uh, they were all submitted, those proposals were all submitted to PSEG and LIPA, um, for selection, and they rejected them all uh, on December 17th. So they selected a few solar proposals, totaling 122 megawatts, uh, but they're all located up island. They didn't select a single project out here, which again makes us wonder what their motives are. And oh, why I can tell you what their motive is. Their motive is they want to make money. They want to make money. Yeah. Uh, but we need to have clean electricity out here. And um, uh, we got to figure out a way how to do this on our own. So right now we're looking at options that we have as a town and as a community to uh, make sure that we have the, we meet the electricity needs and the power needs we have out here in an environmentally and economic sensible way. So uh, how can we possibly do this on our, on our own? What is it? Do we go to the federal government? Do we go to the county government? How can we possibly launch these kinds of very complicated establishments if the power companies are... Of course, I, I've never yet figured out what exactly what is the status of LIPA. I thought they were gone and they're still hanging around. I mean, it's like... Yeah, well, let, you know, let's start at home, right? I always, I, I believe in you got to practice what you preach and you you, uh, you, you take your first step uh, right out of your front door. Um, our uh, homes and our commercial buildings are incredibly wasteful when it comes to how we use energy. So uh, uh, I can tell you that uh, the home my wife and I used to live in used, uh, uh, used a lot more energy than the new home we built about 20 something years ago now. The new home that we built uh, uses only a third of the energy that the old home built. So you have a, you can see from just that one example that there's uh, a huge potential in saving energy just by making, making buildings more energy efficient, better insulation, uh, air sealing buildings so you don't, you don't heat the grate outdoors, uh, putting better lighting in, more energy efficient appliances, a high, higher efficiency boiler for your heating, et cetera. Uh, better, better air conditioning systems, etc. Once you've done that, you can put a relatively solar, a relatively small solar electric system on a house, and you are generating all your power needs right there, all your electricity needs right there at, on the roof of that house. So, not every building in East Hampton, not every structure, every uh, house would be suitable for that because you need some direct sunshine. But certainly every building in East Hampton is suitable to make energy efficiency upgrades. Uh, so that's the first, we, we're sitting on this big potential of energy savings and energy reductions in our homes and businesses. It saves us money and it'll save the environment at the same time and it creates jobs for local contractors who do these energy efficiency upgrades. So that's the first thing we gotta do. And we don't need our utility company for that. We, we, can, we can do that on our own. Each homeowner, each business owner really can do that. And, and you know that you are talking to somebody who has done it as well as you there have you go. done it. Right. You know, we all both have solar panels on our roof. Exactly. And so. uh, it is not only a thrill to get those cheap little bills, but it's also a thrill to know that you're doing whatever you can to help, the, to help Mother Earth. I'm, to me, the Earth comes first. Exactly. You know, and, and I, I, the earth isn't the only earth comes first. It's my grandchildren who come first, you know, and that's what you have to do. You have to help to save, save the earth and you, for, the, for the future people who are going to live here. And solar panels 
are a wonderful thing to do. I will tell you, you get a 30% write-off on your federal income tax, and and also I believe it's a 10%. 25 percent from the state. 25 percent from yeah. the state. I know I have a five thousand dollar credit on my state income tax, yeah. and because uh, I did it last year. And when I did the federal, what I did was I had an IRA that I had accumulated a small amount of money because I don't have a lot of money, but it was a small IRA that I had from um, when I was working, mm -hmm. and I, I I made it into a. Uh, Roth IRA, mm -hmm. and instead of paying a lot of taxes, at 30% covered it. I still got a nice little check back on my federal income tax. So it worked out, and I would urge people to do it right away. Do it right away. Absolutely. Because um, we don't know how long these things the are going to last. Tax, the federal income tax credit on solar panels is scheduled to expire by the end of this year. So oh, don't, 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 really? don't procrastinate on it. Um, it may get extended, but you never know. In, 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 in Not Congress. with this Congress. So um, call your solar contractor right now. Go to, go to our website, renewableenergylongisland.org, and click on Find a Solar Contractor, and you'll find some companies listed there. Give them a call or send them an email. Uh, you can actually do it through our website and uh, get an estimate at least, and, uh, or a couple of estimates. And... Um, Get started. I mean, it's 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 something we we can we should at least consider. Uh, the same thing goes for the home energy audit. Uh, as soon as possible, get your get get an, a home energy audit. It's not like an IRS audit, right? It's no. a, it's a good thing. Get 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 a home energy assessment, as they call it, from a from a certified. It's called a Building Performance Institute certified contractor, um, and then. Um, do the work that that is recommended from that from that assessment. It will save you hundreds and thousands of dollars over the course uh, of of, uh, of a number of years. You make your money back, and then and then some. It's a much better investment than having your money sitting in a bank account uh, or in some in some mutual funds. Uh, yes, and I will tell you that I did do that, and I, I think I've told you this before. What happened was I, I did it, and they come and they um, they close off your house, and they have these instruments that they use right. to see, and they change all your light bulbs too, and put all those 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 light bulbs, the new ones, the swirly ones, into your all of your outlets, which is which are wonderful, and. Uh, and then they give you a printout of the things that you need to do. And it's really uh, quite, a, quite an, a wonderful little thing to watch them doing it. You it's know? pretty amazing. I, I spoke with one of those contractors and said, hey, you know, all these little leaks that we have around windows and doors and, and, and you know, just cracks in the walls, um, does that really matter? And, they, and, and he said, you know what, if you add that all up, the amount of air leakage through that, comes out to be about a four by four foot gaping ho hole in your wall. Wow. And you're trying, imagine you're trying to heat your house or cool your house in the summer, having a, having a big hole like that in, you, in your wall, in your house, right? And no wonder your heating bill or your air conditioning bill is way too high. And we can fix that hole. And that's what you do. You get the energy audit and then you make sure you get the work done to uh, seal these little cracks and put extra insulation on it. And so forth. And it takes a lot, by the way, to heat a house with oil. I mean, I would love to get off oil completely, mm -hmm. because right now I'm saying to myself, "Gee, I better not put the heat up, even though I may be cold," because I don't think they can get to where my outdoor tank is right, to right fill now, it. Right. I'm so, really worried yeah, about it. Yeah. So I'm using some of my electric heaters to warm up my house yeah. because I, I'm worried about using the oil. I mean, it's going to be quite a while with four feet of snow out there yeah. for them to be able to get where, where my particular thing no, is. No, that's a good point you bring up because um, uh, 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 improving the energy efficiency of a home by putting more insulation in it and, and, and sealing up all those, all, all those drafty spots makes the home not just more energy efficient, but it makes it more comfortable. Yes. You know, when you're sitting in near a window, sometimes you feel that draft, yes. right? And it never really is comfortable in the house, even when you crank the heat up to... 
I don't know, 68 or 70 degrees. That's all those little air leaks that add up. And uh, people tell you that, that have done the, the retrofit that the home becomes much more uh, livable, much more comfortable. And isn't that important? I mean, really and truly, don't we want that? If, I mean, as long as we got it, exactly. let's do it for God's sakes. Yeah. Because, you know, I mean, there are people in this world who can't do anything like that because of what's going on and where they live and stuff. But we live in this country. We should be able to do those kind of things. You know, I, that's, that, you're exactly right. I mean, I always say to people, look, you know, we put a man on the moon in this country. We, we, can, we can do this. We can transition from a 20th century old technology, you know, the light bulb and electricity uh, is 100 years old. This goes back to Edison, yeah. right? I, it's we true. now have technologies, 21st century technologies, and we already use all these 21st century technologies in our lives today, s smartphones and computers and those things, right? We should be using those technologies uh, for energy, and that means solar panels and wind turbines and, and highly energy efficient appliances and so forth. It's so now let me also ask you this, because uh, uh, I know someone very closely related to my daughter who's getting a house out here, and I want to be able to have her get her solar panels, but I know she can't afford them. How can you do it if you really can't afford it? Well, again, the first thing is you want to make sure that you're not wasting a lot of energy in the right. home, meaning you, you need home to get that home audit. energy audit done. Uh, because then, the, as I was telling you about my house, we needed a a solar array only one third of the size that we would have otherwise needed with a conventional wasteful uh, home, right? So then you're paying only one third for that solar array. You know, you can put panels on your home for under $10,000 and you can finance that amount. You can uh, either take out a home equity loan or finance it in some other ways. This is a great investment. You're going, going to make your money back. Uh, there may be some financial incentives available from the utility company, uh, apart from the federal and state tax credits. So your solar Well, there was contract. when I did it. I, yeah. I, I don't know uh, what uh, this, uh, these new guys in town, the thugs, PSEG, what they are, uh, what they would be allow. But I, w I think I got 6,000. Yeah, uh, there, there is still a rebate available, but it's going fast. So again, yes. you want to not... Not really. And isn't there some way in which you can uh, uh, finance it through the through them by by paying it off? In there, yes, you're right. There was a program announced by the state just a few months ago yes. that you can finance not only your energy efficiency improvements but also your solar addition of solar panels. Uh, that program it was just announced is terminated, unfortunately. And again, I don't know why they terminated that. I thought it was a great program. Uh, it may still be available until the end of the month. Um, I'm not 100% sure what the status of, this, of it is today. Call a solar installer and they will know exactly whether that is still available. Uh, it may be too late already. But the way I always look at it is when you God. invest in solar panels, you will lower your utility bill or even eliminate uh, paying for electricity. And that means you're making your money, your initial investment back, and um, you, you're keeping your own money in your own pocket rather than sending a check every month to the utility company. So it's like, it's like renting versus owning a home. Aren't you better off owning your own assets? Yes, you well, are. Well, I, I certainly believe that. So, <laughs> I've, I've owned my own place since, uh, you know, I was very young. So, you know, uh, solar, solar panels on your roof really mean you, you have your own power plant. You own your own power plant producing electricity, and the fuel is free. It comes free courtesy of Mother Nature to your rooftop every day. And uh, you can also even eventually get uh, a solar hot water heater. I know you have that. It's something I have That's to look into. Great technology, very cost effective. It's cheaper than, uh, than solar electric panels, so that's maybe a good way to start uh, because you're same thing. You're saving money. You're getting federal and, and state tax credits. Uh, think about it. 30% plus 25% is 55% just in tax credit. So the government pays more than half of the cost of these systems for you, at least for now, uh, until the end of, uh, 
uh, as far as federal tax credit goes until the end of this year. So I would jump at this. I am going to jump at it. Mm -hmm. I, I have to do it because, uh, and you do get plenty of hot water? Absolutely. I mean, what it is actually, you can you, you never run out of hot water, even on a cloudy day. Because you true. can take a shower at night and, and all of that. You know, people go, well, this only works when the sun shines. No, it has a storage tank, and it, it makes the hot water when the sun is shining and then stores it in your hot water tank. And you keep your existing hot water heater, and when there isn't enough hot water or you got guests and everybody's taking yeah. showers, the conventional hot water heater is there as a backup. So you never have to worry about that. You, you always have enough hot water. You just pay less for the uh, oil or the gas that you used to have to pay for to heat your hot water. Well, you have become the hero <laughs> of East Hampton fighting for our planet because, uh, you know, I mean, people have to start getting serious about this. I don't know if you've read any of the other things that have come out in the last couple of months. That the oceans are dying. That they are plants and animals are, are going to be disappearing. I mean, there is a real threat to our planet, and we need to step up to the plate and start to change our ways, because if we don't, we're being suicidal, as far as I am concerned. Yeah, climate change is a, is a huge concern for any community that's, that lives near the coastline. Right. So we, we have to do that. We know what we need to do. We have the, the know-how, the financial means to do it. And we have a town board, a town government here. And Political will. The people to do it. So Yes, indeed. I think we'll do it. And we also have the sun <laughs> and the wind. Lots of it. That's right. <laughs> Thank Nature's you so much. Nature's on our side. Yes, I mean, we've got to do this. this